And with that, we jump into the Roto World Player News. For all your Roto World Player News, go to NBCSports.com. And where else to begin rather than Panthers Bears? Oh, yeah. Thursday night football, Let's Denny. And boy, was it a barn burner. <laughs> Led by Deontay Foreman. 21 carries for 80 yards. And most importantly, that touchdown, he also contributed two catches for 12 yards. We were wondering going into this game, Denny, how this backfield would shake out, especially with Khalil Herbert still not back officially playing with the team yet. And it was Foreman, not Roshan Johnson, that gets the bulk of the work. Obviously, they wanted that revenge game for Deontay Foreman against his former yes. team. But also, also Foreman had been the primary ball carrier. He was splitting routes with Roshan Johnson. So I, I, do, I do think as long as Herbert is out, it looks like he'll be back uh, next week, possibly. Uh, as long as he's out, Foreman is a, I don't know, top 15 option just because the Bears are one of the m more run-heavy teams in the league. He's seeing almost all of the early down work, and he's seeing the goal line work, importantly. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think that's the – to the extent there is a takeaway take from last night, other than just, you know, <laughs> we're, we're gluttons for punishment. Yes, sir. Uh, is that the touch, the touch count between uh, Deontay Foreman and, and uh, Roshan Johnson was 23 to 9. Right. right, and we saw Johnson only played 40% of the snaps. You saw that stat on there. But I think Foreman, who was a healthy scratch for much of the season when Herbert and Roshan Johnson were up, the thought was, oh, maybe that now that Roshan Johnson's back, is he going to retake this backfield? He's the rookie yeah. that they like a lot. And no, I mean, Foreman hasn't <laughs> seeded any work. And so I feel like 10 days from now when the Bears come back and we say goodbye to Teabag and we welcome back Justin Fields, it feels like Foreman will have a fantasy relevant role. My expectation is it's going to be Foreman and Herbert. Yeah. And John, you know, Johnson uh, will kind of go by the wayside. But who knows? Maybe Johnson replaces Herbert as they work him back in. But to me, the, the workload here, um, where he's now had back to back games with over 20 touches and over 80 yards rushing, mm -hmm. tells me that whatever the backfield looks like for Chicago next week, Deontay Foreman is going to be a big part of it. I, I agree, and I also think that him doing well, Foreman doing well over these past few weeks, could make it a, a kind of messy backfield situation, whereas Khalil Herbert, before the injury, was kind of fun for fantasy. He was yeah. running a lot of routes. He was seeing targets. The Bears were targeting the running back position at the one of the highest rates in the league. He was seeing a lot of the carries. Now, with Foreman pr producing like he has, uh, Herbert could come back to a scaled back role, which is unfortunate for those who held on for dear life to, uh, to Herbert. <laughs> no doubt. On the Panthers' side of things, not much, honestly. Adam Thielen catches six of his ten targets for 42 yards, yeah. which you know might be enough in your flex spot. Bryce Young, it just has not been a good rookie season for Bryce Young. And it, everything around him is bad, but in a vacuum, he looks bad as well. He just doesn't look confident. He's not comfortable for obvious reasons. Very and uncomfortable. His offense yes. doesn't have much in the way of playmaking talent. No. Uh, I mean, there's Thielen and nobody else. Right. I mean, Jonathan Mingo, every game has 200 air yards and no actual yards. You know, you can't, can't feed your family with those air yards. I've tried. Have you? Uh, yeah, yeah. That gone? My, my kids don't like it. They, they want the real yards. Yeah, Con Edison doesn't accept that when you send the utility <laughs> bill. <laughs> so that, so ex yeah, yeah. that explains why I have all these notices. It, right. And, yeah. and so, uh, so you, have, you have Thielen catching, you know, these, these underneath passes, kind of a, what we call the PPR scam on the Roto World football show. Uh, and, you know, he's come through in a lot of ways. But this offense, this Carolina offense has become so dysfunctional of late that he can't get away with it every every week. And that's kind of unfortunate because he was really good for fantasy for a while. Yeah, I mean, I think your win your window to have sold high on uh, Adam Thielen has passed. So I think if you have Adam Thielen, you're still hanging tough. You like the fact that he's had double digit targets in four of the last five games. He's had at least 10 targets in four of the last five games, but their upcoming schedule, <laughs> they're home to Dallas. Oof. They're at Tennessee and improving Titans defense. They're at Tampa Bay. All right, that doesn't scare you. Then they're at New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And at least because Thielen plays the slot, he'll avoid Lattimore. So, you know, up and down schedule. If there's a positive, they should be throwing quite a bit in the second half when Dallas yeah. got his their they backups should. in. They should. Um, yes, uh, that that game could get ugly. Can, can I say something? Not though? could. Look, can can I say say something you about this? You offense? say whatever you want. I'm gonna say we're this. in a bar. Okay, look, yeah. look. You're the new Jay. This for fantasy purposes. Yes, sir. We need Andy Dalton to be the quarterback of this team right now because with that with Bryce Young, Adam Thielen is like a PPR wide receiver three ish. Okay, with Dalton, he's like borderline wide receiver one. Yeah. And because Dalton can run this offense, I don't Correct. know Bryce Young's future. You know, maybe better than his his present, hopefully. But right now, he cannot manage this offense. I, I know. 
But that there's literally, uh, barring injury, there's literally no chance of that happening. I know. Yeah, you're right. You're but right. I mean, because it makes no sense. They invest in the number help. one overall pick, and if exactly. it, and and if you're the if you're Scott Fitterer, if you're Frank Reich, who are running the Panthers, you what you need to do is you're like, we need to see what we have in Bryce Young, and if at the end of the year they don't think like he's going to make that leap, then they're going to yeah. be in a position to be able to draft a replacement, which would be insane well, that, that they traded be, up for Bryce oh, Young. Man. Drafted him number one overall, and then they would still go out and try to get Drake May or Caleb their first Williams. Pick. They right. traded it for Bryce Young. Oh, that's true. They don't have that. To oh, yeah. oh, the, the Bears. The Bears. Oh. Maybe they trade it back. They say, "We'll give you Bryce Young. <laughs> give it to us back. Can we do a swap?" I think, I think yes. they're Re- stuck. Re- refund. I, I think they're stuck. No, no it's, it's, it's at least a two-year They got to roll them out. They yeah. got. They yeah. got to roll them out there. Uh, Andy Dalton, unfortunately, even though he gives them quote a better chance to win at the moment, they need to see what they have in Bryce Young. The only other takeaway for me from this game was just the backfield again. Chuba Hubbard does nothing. Miles Sanders does nothing. But the touch count was 11-4. to four. Chuba Hubbard to Miles Sanders. To the extent that you want a Carolina Panthers running back, and next week against Dallas, you probably don't. Um, or the week after against Tennessee. Um, and honestly, the week after that against Tampa Bay, you don't yeah, love every either, week, right? I, you know, sure. But at least the week after that is New Orleans. Actually, you probably don't want a Carolina Panther running back at any time in the near year. future. But if you're in a deeper league, to the extent you do, it feels like it is still Chuba Hubbard. You know, yeah. there was there were thoughts that maybe Miles Sanders on a short week might get more work, and he didn't, Denny. Well, it would have been nice for, for me in one league to have Chuba Hubbard running those routes late in the game and getting those garbage time receptions because yes. Miles Sanders got, got those. Yeah, he's got a couple. So yeah. I, I'm interested to see the breakdown of routes. Uh, but, yeah, Hubbard is the only startable guy. Honestly, though, I think you can kind of ignore this backfield going yeah, forward. Yeah, a thousand percent. Like, like I, I feel like you, you had to be scraping bottom in, like, 14-team league. Yeah, as, and again, the, the upcoming schedule is not kind. They will at least have 10 days to prepare for the Cowboys. Let's look at the injuries we're tracking. Getting away from this game and into the weekend, Kenneth Walker practiced in full. He was dealing with a chest injury that kept him out in the early portion of the week, looking like good news for Kenneth Walker. Justin Jefferson with the hamstring, he's still not expected to play. He's limited in practice. James Conner, Zay Jones, and Jamar Chase, and Keaton Mitchell, all limited in practice, so keep an eye on those. Going into fantasy football pregame, a couple DNPs here that are very important. Damian Pierce and Josh Downs. T. Higgins did not practice. He's not expected to play now. That's big news for the Bengals passing offense. Ruled out officially, and Nico Collins uh, with the calf injury did not practice. Barry, which one of these What's the what's the trickle effect? Effect, I guess. What we start with with T. Higgins, that's one that is a big deal. He, 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 yeah. I mean, you see it there in your bottom the screen. He's already been ruled out for Week Ten, and a week in which I have Joe Burrow as my number two overall quarterback, that's and tough. um, have him on the love list. Good. Byron uh, Trent Irwin, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, good Seriously. times. Seriously, yeah. Trent Irwin is actually I like. He's a good DFS if you're playing DraftKings. Like yeah, he's yeah, dirt cheap sure. on DraftKings, but yeah, also could be viable here. Uh, yeah, in 12 team leagues where you start, you know, multiple flex spots or whatever. I mean, Trent Irwin saw. Uh, 10 targets last time T. Higgins was out. And honestly, this T. Higgins injury looks to me like the kind where he'll miss this week and possibly the following week. Hopefully, no more than that. They're home to since uh, they're home to the Houston Texans, and Nico Collins is another one that's also concerning as well because yeah. the expectation here, like over under in this game is 47. This is one of the higher games on the slate. We expect these are two teams that um, – well, Cincinnati's been okay running the ball. Houston's really struggled to run the ball. But neither defense has played great this entire year. Sure. And you expect C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow to be able to move the ball back and forth. So if Nico Collins can't go, yeah. uh, that would be concerning. But very excited about the potential of Tank Dell Absolutely. in this one. And obviously, you know, Jamar Chase. But I do like, I do like the Trent Irwin call for sure. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.